We're currently sitting on a 99% gain in boil, natural gas, and we're going to pull profits soon and rotate that into our top growth asset, which I'll reveal in this presentation. Last year, our total return for our high-risk growth portfolio was 233%, turning every $10,000 into $33,000. This year, we're kicking butt. We're up 18% in 2022 year to date. And again, this is with our high risk growth strategy. That's where we want you to put about 30% of your capital. Our safe growth system, where you should deploy most of your money, is also up, outperforming the S&P 500 and NASDAQ year to date. We'll look at those returns later. Uh, but right now, we're looking at a 7.67% return to start off February, and it's only the second day in February. This is primarily from our natural gas play. So let me ask you, are you ready to triple your money in 2022? Here's the current trade recommendation. If you're just getting started to deploy $10,000 and try out our strategy. The first play is your crash insurance, UVXY. You're gonna pick up 77 shares if the SPY ETF which represents the US stock market goes down, UVXY goes up. And the faster it goes down, the faster UVXY goes up. In fact, it has an exponential relationship. Meanwhile, our growth asset is Ethereum. <laughs> this platform is amazing. It's essentially ripping off the entire US financial system from loan generation to insurance to just about anything you can imagine, uh, trading platforms, all kinds of stuff. It's all being ripped off. It's all being replicated into DeFi and it's a very vibrant, fast growing ecosystem. So we're very bullish on Ethereum long-term with the 55% uh, recent drawdown and the global economy coming to a, an extreme slowdown. We're gonna show you the data. That means interest rates are about to fall and you're gonna make a huge gain on growth assets. So we're gonna pull profits off of boil soon and rotate that into uh, Ethereum. So that's gonna be your next trade alert coming down the pipeline very soon. Now, the inflation hedge previously was long big oil. We took a massive gain on that. And then we rotated it into oil, which was trading cheap uh, just a few weeks ago. So about two weeks ago, it was less than half this price. And we have been above 100% today. It came down a little bit. Uh, looks like Russia may invade Ukraine after the Chinese Olympics, February 20th. So I don't want to get all out of the position until late February. Uh, but I do see the data coming in quickly that yields should fall. Growth is coming to a complete stop. And that means you want to be long the growth assets until that Build Back Better bill passes. So get ready to pull some profits soon and go big on Ethereum. Let's talk about the key macros to focus on in 2022. The Russia-Ukraine conflict is driving energy costs sky high right now. So this is working out really well for us. Uh, and again, they just stopped all fertilizer uh, exports for two months to warn the US what will happen if we try to stop them from taking over Ukraine. Uh, so they can cut off natural gas, oil to Europe, and they're already cutting off fertilizers, which is already up 200%. I'm actually expecting corn and thus the feed that lives on corn, so we're talking about meat, uh, to go sky high this year. So Russia has really got us by the balls right here if we try to stop their invasion. Uh, so very, very exciting uh, month ahead for how we're positioned. Yeah, but big picture, global economy is slowing down. We just lost 300,000 jobs with the ADP payroll today. Friday's data, probably going to be negative too. Now, this is a seasonal trend over the last three years. So I do think jobs will pick back up uh, into February, March. Uh, but for now, this is good. This means inflation could very well likely peak by March. We're going to have dovish surprises from the Federal Reserve after all this hawkish talk. So get ready. I'm ready to take profits on boil soon, not yet, and double down on Ethereum with Grayscale Trust ETHE. 
Congress already increased the debt ceiling by two and a half trillion dollars. That's very important. Now they just need to agree on how to spend it. I believe that spending package will be delivered as soon as the CPI begins to fall, which I'm anticipating will be in April uh, because March is the two year anniversary of oil going negative. So all that data uh, is very inflationary up to March and then falls into April. Uh, which means we want to be long Ethereum through April and then bet on inflation coming right back once the Build Back Better bill is. So look for a massive gain in Ethereum through April. And then we're going to want to take some profits off and get back into energy right as they pass that Build Back Better bill. So this is our main look at the markets. Where else do you put your money? Cash is trash. Governments are devaluing. Uh, globally, they have a demographic problem. Too many people are retiring, too few young people to support. Uh, furthermore, corporations are automating jobs. So either you're going to have a populist revolution that overthrows governments, or the government's going to buy everybody off by printing money and handing it out. And that's exactly their plan. Uh, so cash is not a very viable long-term position. Uh, there can be small periods of time to go long cash. Now is not the time. Um, bonds are still garbage as well. I love bonds. We've made our clients a ton of money on bonds. Uh, the problem is the 30-year treasury needs to hit 25 to 3%, and the CPI, which is at 7, needs to fall to 3. I think the timeline on that uh, is probably uh, not until next year. I think it's going to take a full year for that inflation to come down and for the bond puking to, to come to an end. Uh, now, right now, I'm expecting bonds to rebound through April until that Build Back Better bill is passed. So it's just a short reversion we're expecting. Uh, and again, I'm thinking early 2023, we'll finally be able to hedge with bonds, uh, but we need both those prints to come together. CPI needs to fall and interest rates need to rise. So again, investors have no other option. They could sell their stocks all they want, but then what are they going to do? Sit in cash and be devalued at 5 to 10% a year? Go to bonds with negative real rate of return? Absolutely not. That's why the money keeps going right back to the hot assets that make sense in this environment. And that's your stocks, cryptocurrencies, commodities. Okay, We just need to have the right mix and understand what's happening uh, with interest rates primarily, which is, again, highly dependent on government spending. Now, our biggest fear would be a strong labor market, but guess what? Biden has no clue how to create a strong labor market. So it's going to be a very, very slow job recovery, uh, which is very, very good if you want to be betting big on crypto, uh, which is exactly what we are doing. And again, rising interest rates are the key to threats in the market for how we're positioned. Now, the ADP report, uh, excuse me, it wasn't 200,000 jobs. We lost 300,000 jobs. Insanity. So wait till the uh, payroll Friday. They've been whispering 150,000 new jobs. Uh, it looks like uh, they're trying to prepare everyone for negative print. Okay, so this is just really bad. Now. What else could go wrong with how we're positioning our clients? The PPI and CPI need to slow down. If they do not, uh, the Fed's trapped. They're going to have to jump interest rates and start doing quantitative tightening, and that's going to destroy markets. So we'll get ready to short the hell out of everything if that PPI and CPI don't slow down. Now, I'm going to give you exact data points of exactly what I want to see each print to be confident that the inflation is slowing down and will fall in April later on this presentation. Okay, so, and again, February 12th in 10 days, uh, which would, what, that would put us, I think on next Friday, we're gonna get that next CPI print. Um, so again, we just need it to cool off. It could still rise. The market will look at a slowdown in the CPI as extremely bullish for growth assets. Okay, but if it's going to be beating to the upside, we've got problems. And we will prepare you for that with our three time a week webinar every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay, so you're going to know exactly what to watch, how it's going to impact markets, and be ready to pull the trigger the second we issue that trade alert. 
Now, again, if, if things are going to crumble, I would expect oil to lead the way down. It's just not happening. OPEX increased the output uh, slightly today, 400,000 barrels. They've got to get these, these energy costs down. This is a massive political problem. Uh, and there's just not enough energy out there for the demand. This is a big, big, big problem. Uh, and the Ukraine-Russia conflict, uh, it just accelerates this problem and Russia knows that they're taking complete advantage of this. Uh, so very exciting times. And if everything goes haywire, we're long UVXY. Uh, if the global stock market collapses, we can make a massive gain. Two years ago in March, there was a black swan event, which we did predict and profit from. UVXY went up 1,100%. So a 10% position in UVXY. And you can sleep like a baby knowing that any amount of drawdown won't be a, a, a big problem for your portfolio. In fact, if you get a 35% crash in a single month, uh, we can actually make a profit without even touching the portfolio just by having that hedge. Now, if you're watching this video on YouTube, I highly recommend you call Dean and grab one of the three special deals per day at 505-322-7515. Uh, almost everyone on a free trial is expiring today. So you're gonna miss the trade alert to sell boil and then to rotate into two new positions. Okay, so there's actually gonna be two new positions coming in and you don't wanna miss out. Okay, let's take a quick look at returns. Our safe growth strategy, which gives you a global stock portfolio. You own all of Asia, all of Europe, all of North America, plus you have a variety of inflation hedges is already up 4%, 4.4% uh, in 2022 after a 25.8% return in 2021. Our high risk strategy is up 18% year to date with a 7% return in February. And most of that gain is again from our bet on natural gas with boil. We're gonna start shaving that down and looking at the next cheap uh, inflation hedge. And it may surprise you what, what I have up my sleeve for the next high risk uh, energy inflation hedge. Uh, and it's trading super cheap. It's correlated to the price of oil. It has everything to do with this big conflict. So there's a, a hint to tease you guys at what we have coming. Now, if you're doing the combo strategy, you're up five and a half percent this year. I do need to update February's return uh, after closing out a 98% return. And this strategy just rebalances the portfolio once a month to be 70-10. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hop into the data. Now, normally we jump right into charts. Today, I'm actually start off with my news feed. I'm gonna do that from now on. I know everybody likes to see what the, the top news is. Kremlin, Putin is willing to talk to anyone, including those who are <laughs> utterly confused, uh, trolling Biden. Uh, this is what it costs to create growth in the US. Uh, so if you think the US is about to uh, balance the budget or anything of that nature, just realize this, we're now having to create 3% debt to create 1% GDP. And this has been getting worse and worse over time. Uh, so it's either keep the printing press rolling or default on everything and go into a depression. That's really the option for, for politicians. Uh, AMC doubles their junk bond offering from 500 billion to 950 bill, uh, million, going for a billion dollars. Uh, Pretty hysterical. Uh, looks like all these mandates are slowly reversing. The, the Canadian truck scene is just getting comical to watch. Um, they can't stop them. They are reversing policy quickly. So, uh, so this is good for predicting what's gonna happen with mandates, labor growth, uh, and all in all, this is gonna be pro-energy, pro rising rates, uh, but it's gonna be very, very slow motion. So it's gonna be critical to have all these different inflation hedges uh, in our portfolio uh, throughout the year and to continue finding what's the cheap energy hedge to rotate into. Cause we see these, uh, these speculative money pushes into oil, then into natural gas. We saw it into lumber futures. So where's the next big uh, spike that we can predict. So we'll be looking for that new trade alert as soon as we rotate out of boil. Here's over in Belgium. So people have just had it with all this nonsense. Uh, 
Uh, we got McConnell coming out saying we got to end all these mandates. So it really looks like uh, we can anticipate that. Uh, just an interesting stat. China used more cement in three years than the U.S. did in 100 years. Mind boggling. Here's a look at the job losses, uh, mostly in hospitality, leisure, and transportation, and mostly due to uh, that super contagious uh, variant that, that hit the whole globe here, uh, which is now really coming to an end. And it's amazing to get that energy spike as jobs are decreasing. That's quite, uh, quite impressive. Okay, Tom Sharp says, how does Senator Lujan, that's from New Mexico, uh, possibly a V-A-C-C-I-N injury, by the way, uh, stroke impact BBB, the Build Back Better? Yeah, so I don't think they're going to be passing any bills till April, Tom, because uh, Manchin won't, won't help out until the CPI is falling. And that's really just that. Uh, and for crypto, well, what's funny is crypto does not need that bill to pass. Uh, in fact, I think that will be a headwind against crypto when it does pass. It's going to make interest rates rise because it's going to be it's going to be one of the biggest spending bills in history, and it's going to be extremely inflationary. Uh, so yeah, without it, rates are going to fall. Anticipation of stimulus is going to come in. I think we're going to get a big tech boom. So right now is perfect time to rotate out of the inflation play into the uh, the low growth, low rate play. So tech and crypto. Chai Girl says with distillate draw stocks now 19% below the five year average and the Midwest is a, mint, a wintry mess right now and Northeast is embracing for another storm Thursday through Friday. Yeah, so it looks like there's still some more, more gains to be made in boil uh, just from weather. Uh, then you throw in the Russia conflict. It looks like timeline is after February 20th, they may invade. David Rosenberg says ADP shows payrolls down 301,000 and the pundits are looking through the data as solely uh, O-M-I-C-R-O-N induced. So let's see the impact on inflation is deemed permanent but one can safely use the word transitory to describe the economic impact without ridicule. Give me a break. So he thinks interest rates are falling. And of course he always thinks interest rates are falling. Uh, as far as the QE taper, it's uh, not so much, a little bit. So they have pulled back a little bit relative to the peak. They're still printing money. Now here's a, a print that suggests perhaps the Demand is still there. For all the talk about the Fed hiking into a slowdown, Wards just reported that total vehicle sales ran 15 million units, SAAR, in January. That's about a 20% higher than the sales pace in December. This will provide a substantial boost to consumption and in turn GDP in Q1. People want their used cars right now. Okay, Lance Roberts, also a PERMA bond bull and a PERMA uh, equity bear. Uh, what's funny is I'm actually believing yields will fall and that makes me very bullish on stocks, but you get people like Rosenberg and Lance Roberts uh, and all they wanna do is buy bonds uh, and ignore the inflation of the CPI. Uh, but here's the target interest rate hikes of all these banks. Very, very hawkish. Um, he says he'll take the under on all of them. I believe he's right. I believe the inflation is going to, and the economy is going to slow down uh, because the spending is of the government has slowed down. Uh, but I do think they will pass that bill around April, and then we're going to be having rate hikes back on the table by summer. Okay, we got some troops moving over to Europe. The conflict is not uh, subsiding yet. Here's a look at the growth of debt. If we're gonna be long crypto, this is an important chart to understand. 2000, we had 6 trillion in debt. A decade later, we doubled it to 13 trillion. A decade later, we doubled it to 23 trillion. 
if we keep the trend, uh, we're about to add, uh, what is that? Another $16 trillion in eight years. Okay, crypto assets are less than 2 trillion. Real estate market's 300 trillion. So if you're looking for growth, you know, that's where I really like to, to position our clients. Okay, PayPal banned some several million users. Their account dropped, uh, their stock dropped 25%. I think that might be somehow correlated to the volatility in crypto day over day because uh, PayPal is very involved in that uh, market. Peter Schiff says ADP unexpectedly reported a loss of jobs in January as payrolls dropped by 301,000. The consensus expected a gain of 225,000 with price pressures mounting and the oil price about to break 90 per barrel. I don't think it's gonna stay above 90. I'm expecting that to pull back uh, and then rebound uh, with more stimulus, but we will see those energy costs continue to surprise to the upside. And I have a new way to play oil that's super cheap right now uh, that I'm looking at rotating out of boil into. Um, so economic conditions are deteriorating just as, fe uh, as the Fed is preparing to hike rates. So again, it's all talk so far. The game is over. Countries who end all restrictions, UK, Ireland, Denmark, Finland, Netherlands, Switzerland, um, Countries who have a revolution going on, Canada. Luke Groman says, Biden, we're going to sanction Russia's use of the USD through SWIFT. Putin says, keep your US dollars. Maybe you can use the Fed's rate hike projections for fertilizer instead. Russia to ban exports of ammonium nitrate for two months starting from February 2nd. Okay, so food's going to cost a lot this year. <laughs> it's going to piss off a lot of people in the US for political pressure. Uh, and it's probably gonna starve a lot of people in poor countries. This is a huge, huge problem. And they have a massive monopoly on this uh, part of the market. Uh, I'm keeping an eye on the old, old barbellic relic. Uh, that's what I think Buffett calls it, gold. Three of the four most significant bottoms in gold's history coincided with the start of rate hikes, 1976, 1999, and 2015. This March, we are lining up for another historic bottom in gold, which happens to be the beginning of a rate hike cycle. Now, we'll have to keep an eye on it. It's, we did well with it last year in our portfolios. It's been a big, big dud, and we did pull out of those. So keep a close eye on that. Twitter CEO Dorsey, Jack Dorsey, I'm creating a decentralized exchange to create on-ramps from fiat into Bitcoin. Uh, this is from a movie called Office Space, which is pretty funny. Uh, I was told there would be rate hikes. That's the joke. Uh, Babylon B, joke about Trudeau. Okay. Google does a 20 to one split to make their share price attractive to retailer uh, gamblers over at Robinhood and Reddit and uh, grew revenue to a high of $75 billion, 32% increase quarter over quarter. Massive. Luke Grumman, uh, in plain English, there isn't enough oil at prices that don't blow up the economy to fund the level of GDP growth needed so that the debt doesn't blow up the economy, but if the prices rise enough to get enough oil without blowing up the economy, it will blow up the debt. <laughs> um, he's, just, he's just saying it's not gonna work out the way uh, we've underinvested in energy and then increased the money supply. And now we've got big problems. Okay, here's the agricultural commodities. We've got the cost input, 200% uh, higher year over year. This is gonna be a big, big problem. Looking at the corn and cow ETF, uh, but I'm not sure that's our best bet for an energy hedge right now, because we really want something that can move, looking for uh, assets that can double on us.
We had the biggest outflow of the SPY, uh, I believe last week, uh, last month, biggest outflow, $30 billion. Uh, Exxon profits at 35 oil, so they're making more money than they've ever made, which is what we were predicting. Uh, we sold NRG a little bit early, but uh, Boyle's been outperforming it two to one, so don't need to cry about it. Bullard says, I think the upcoming monthly jobs report will not be good. Uh, let's see, McConnell says, Democrats reckless spending has fueled the worst inflation in 40 years. Well, wait a second, who passed the CARES Act? Um, so I would say it was the, the, the massive Paul, uh, push, I think it was about 4 trillion with the CARES Act back in 2020 under McConnell and Trump. And then another trillion uh, from Trump, and then two trillion from Biden. So it's really funny. The spending of the Republicans is going to just bury the Democrats in the midterms. And uh, so just comical. But what does he have to say? Democrats' reckless spending has fueled the worst inflation in 40 years. So that's why McConnell increased the debt ceiling by two and a half trillion dollars this winter. Families are hurting at the checkout counter at the gas pump when they pay their bills. Exactly what bipartisan experts warned would happen if they ran through their reckless far left spending uh, that he's helping make sure gets passed. Okay, here's that yield curve uh, that potentially predicts recessions. It's going the wrong way. It's going towards negative territory. It's not there yet. And again, that's typically 16 months. So typically what we see is the yield curve flattens and then the long end goes up and then you get the crash and it's about 16 months on average after the inversion. We're not there yet. Uh, Albert Live Monitor says the Fed needs to create a crisis to extend QE uh, and buy up the bond market to keep the, the game going. Simple as that. Bank of America says we had a three sigma short covering rally today. Uh, so the market was extremely hedged and now everybody had to start unwinding that. We had a big up day, SPY up 1% uh, today, NASDAQ up 0.8. Emerging markets not getting as much love. Uh, European market up 0.77. And we've got that TLT relatively flat oil slightly up. Uh, and the banner obviously uh, playing natural gas. Okay, so Alf says, even in Europe, inflation prints keep on surprising. On the upside, German CPI printed at 5% yesterday, way above consensus. Traders are now pricing in the most aggressive ECB hiking cycle in years. I repeat, ECB aggressive hikes, words you normally don't see in the same sentence. Uh, Andres Stino Larson says, I want to take the other side of this bet. Uh, so he's been going on and on that he thinks all this hawkish talk is premature and that uh, we're about to experience a slowdown. I, I do agree with that. Banks are lending, um, so this will help, but can they lend as fast as the government has? Uh, not even close. Alf says, weak economic data is likely to save the Fed from going ballistic. Bad news equals good news. Market soon on your screens. I would agree with that. Okay, Mr. Blonde has a big piece, uh, essentially predicting that we're going to have a slowdown. Here's a look at the, some of the top highlights. I believe in weight of evidence approach. Here are several reasons to think ISM is due a sharp fall in the next couple of months. Maybe it starts today, weak, disappointing. Regional PMIs is a sign. So we can see US manufacturing way up in the 60s, uh, but regional falling uh, almost to contractory levels below 50. New orders and inventories is a classic leading indicator. We have a huge buildup of inventories. 
Lost momentum in CRB raw industrial materials points to a slowing. And we're also seeing that in that Baltic dry index that has been falling rapidly. Rolling earnings revision breadth, another measure of fading momentum. Lagged effect from weak China credit impulse. Next phase is falling ISM. Uh, so you can see the Chinese credit impulse has been falling for all of last year and they're just slowly starting to uh, increase credit. Uh, so that could be hitting the US here soon. I think that's my key highlights I wanted to point out of that. Uh, and then we got that Russell 2000 crashing as well. We'll take a look at that chart. That's the most alarming chart right now is the Russell 2000 still. Uh, and this is looking at the, a lot of people look at South Korea as a trade hub to predict markets and their currency has been falling. We just broke 30 trillion in US debt. And again, we're likely gonna double that every decade. That's the main reason why we wanna be long uh, cryptocurrencies. Peter Schiff says, some think inflation will ease up, allowing the Fed to be less aggressive on rate hikes then the consensus expects others believe inflation will pick up, forcing the Fed to be more aggressive. Both are wrong. Inflation will be higher than expected, but the Fed will be easier. Uh, if that's the case, you better stay long your energy plays. Um, so we will consistently be playing that. I do think the inflation is gonna fall here starting in April. Mansion to reporters just now, what build back better bill? It's dead. Okay, so um, this is good for crypto. Tons of money out there. We need rates to fall. As soon as the build back better bill is passed, we're gonna go heavier back into energy. Um, so I'm getting ready to fade the energy from being such a huge chunk of the portfolio and go bigger on growth. So NASDAQ uh, and Ethereum and Bitcoin are my favorite plays for that. David Hunter says, the melt-up is underway. As I have said previously, I expect it to be broad, steep rally with both growth and value, large, small cap playing, semis, fangs, industrials, airlines, autos, commodities, copper and steel miners, financials, and even small cap tech will perform well. Longview says inflation is a lagging indicator. He points out that the ISM manufacturing is already starting to fall. U.S. Treasury expects to issue $729 billion from January through March. Um, and they're already sitting on a huge cash pile. Uh, so, wow, they're just getting ready to spend a lot of money. Okay, so I think that's uh, the most important headlines. Okay, so now we're gonna look at charts and data. Uh, first of all, reverse repo is the QE buffer, still at 1.6 trillion. Uh, that means there's low chance of interest rates spiraling out of control on the front end of the bond market. Uh, so I'm expecting that two and one year to stop rising and to start falling. That'd be very bullish for our growth assets. Here's uh, Boyle compared to NRGU uh, since we got in. So Boyle's up 100%, NRGU is up 45. So we are outperforming our old inflation hedge two to one. Here's a look at NRGU, interest rates, and the NASDAQ. 
Uh, we've got interest rates in yellow up 2%, two percent, two and a half, and that's shot NRG up 34, uh, while the Nasdaq's up three. So I'm expecting these rates to stabilize, fall, uh, and for the Nasdaq to help perform from here, uh, at least in the near future. Now the Russia conflict is giving the energy cycle a few extra weeks, I believe, uh, and a good reason to, to hold on to some boil uh, into the end of February to see how this conflict uh, plays out. Here's our emerging market play. Uh, you can see it's highly correlated to interest rates rising in general. And uh, you can see there's a big catch up play to, to be achieved here. Now, China with a very strong economy has been popping bubbles to try to get their currency and bond market position uh, position to, to enter prime time. And so they've got to get rid of a lot of these bubbles and remove all the currency controls before they can get there. So I think that's why they've been uh, allowing so many things to go bust, uh, step back for a leap forward uh, in general. Uh, so for, for emerging markets, if I'm right and rates fall, it's not necessarily, necessarily going to cause emerging markets to fall. Uh, but as soon as those rates do begin to rise, uh, that's what I'm expecting emerging markets to really outperform again, uh, which could potentially be in April. Uh, now, this is the worst chart out there. Uh, Russell 2000's not following rates to the upside and has broken out of its channel. Uh, so that's really bad. We're gonna keep a close eye on that. A little bit of a rebound today from its trough low. Uh, we're looking at a 5% jump since the 28th. Uh, so yeah, this is important. This Let's see from low to high, uh, about a 6.5% gain, but it's still way below that uh, range it had been in all year. We're not playing the Russell 2000, but it can be a good leading indicator. Okay, here's our European index. Uh, had a similar pattern as Russell 2000, extremely similar, a lot less volatility and bouncing back stronger. Um, so I would expect this to uh, essentially, if we're right, underperform until build back better bills passed and then outperform because uh, that's when we think rates will begin to rise again. Okay, dollar index. Surprised me jumping to 97.4. Uh, and now it's been falling quite rapidly, currently at 96. We will make significant changes to the portfolio when it approaches 90, uh, which is where I think it's going to bottom out in the short term. As far as how long that takes, it could take quite some time. Uh, but we're running massive twin deficits. And that's the primary way to predict uh, the action on the dollar which I believe will be down. Okay, Turkish Lira, we've been looking at for volatility. Uh, it has completely calmed down. Chinese Yuan, uh, still extremely strong, not devaluing in terms of risks of their real estate market collapsing. Uh, here's a look at lumber futures. Uh, after rising 160% since August 21st, uh, we've seen it pull back. Okay, so that's a sign of deflation coming in. And it runs about two months ahead of oil. Uh, the last time it crashed, it warned us that oil would pull back about two months early. Here's a look at copper futures, still trading in a range, uh, but overall bullish. Here's that Baltic dry index. This is cost to ship commodities between continents. Uh, very deflationary signal here, crashing from 5,600 to 1,400. Uh, this seems like it's getting a little bit overdone. I'd expect this to bottom out soon and then to start rising. Uh, 
um, but signaling that energy costs probably are going to fall soon. We can see this discrepancy now in rates in yellow and the price of oil in the candlestick. Uh, so I think oil is getting ready to top out and fall, probably just need a de-escalation uh, from Russia, Ukraine for that to occur. If it does escalate, then boy, oh boy, uh, that'll be very interesting. Uh, but yeah, we can see these are starting to get a bit of a spread here. My guess is oil is going to top out and fall uh, one way or another uh, until the Build Back Better bill is passed. Okay, here's a look at two-year, 10-year, and 30-year rates over the last uh, two weeks. And so we had a huge jump in the two-year and it's starting to fall back down. Uh, in general, what would be healthy for the market uh, would be the 30-year going up and the two-year going down. Uh, and, that's, and then the 10-year staying flat. So we've got all of them going down right now which has been causing our stocks to go up. Okay, in this chart, we're looking at some tech giants. Uh, so from that recent bottom, you can see NVIDIA has jumped 15%, Google 14, Apple 10, Tesla 10, Amazon 7. Okay, so the market's predicting that, again, growth is slowing, so go along the growth, rates are gonna fall. Now, over in the other portion of the S&P 500, uh, we're following specifically Bank of America, JP Morgan, and Berkshire Hathaway. And you can see during the similar rebound period, uh, they're not performing nearly as well. Okay, in fact, some of them are down because rates have been falling. Over in Asia, we're paying close attention to Alibaba, Tencent, and Taiwan Semiconductors. And so it uh, looks like they're getting ready to make some pretty big moves to the upside. So the, this has been, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor has been ultra strong, but Alibaba and Tencent are trading at 35 and 50% discount from recent highs. And two of my favorite companies to go along uh, for a value play currently. This chart is our key company in the European index, Toyota, because uh, it includes Japan and uh, just really, really strong returns out of uh, Toyota. Okay, and then for the best company to follow to predict energy, uh, we're looking at Exxon and boy, oh boy, it just keeps going up, up, up. I'd expect this to have a pullback as soon as the Russia-Ukraine conflict comes to an end and uh, expectations for supply increase at these really, really profitable prices. Here's the 10 and two year uh, spread falling. It's not negative, uh, but it's going the wrong way. Look at the yield curve in a little bit. Here are the bonds we follow, TLT for the government debt, LQD for investment grade, so your big, big, big US companies, and J and K for, for your junky American companies, like the Russell 2000 companies. Uh, they're all about flat, so it looks like the pain is over. We can see they did have some pain, and that's quite likely why we've had a lot of volatility lately. These bond markets uh, make and break everything. So you can see there's been a sell-off, uh, but it seems to have calmed down. This is the Tesla to Ethereum correlation, uh, signaling either Tesla is going to dump or Ethereum is about to ramp up. And again, if rates are about to fall, I believe Ethereum is about to ramp up. We're comparing Bitcoin to gold here, UGL up above for gold, GBTC below for Bitcoin. Uh, so gold's been doing a whole lot of nothing. I mean, if Let's see how far I have to zoom out for it to have any kind of change of price. So if we go back to June 21st, we can see a 12% decline in, in gold. Uh, so it's just been going nowhere for quite some time. Now, as soon as the dollar index, DXY does hit 90, I would like to put us into uh, three plays. Um, so by the time that happens, interest rates will have likely risen sharply. 
Um, but we would be long EUO, the dollar versus the euro, uh, TMF, that's the 20 year in, uh, bond times three, and then UVXY. Uh, those are our three deflationary bets um, that time-wise I like the 90 DXY to go long. Okay, in this chart, we're looking at uranium, rare earth metals, tan and copper miners. Currently we're in uranium and REMX uh, and they're outperforming. This is in safe growth. We have 8% return in uranium since February, uh, since January 27th. 5% return in REMX, 10 is only up five, copper miners 1.8. So we've got the two alternative uh, energy type of plays, uh, the best two in the most recent run-up in our portfolio currently. The market cap of Bitcoin's at $711 billion, over two times that of Ethereum at $322 billion. Uh, so those are my two favorite plays. The only other play I'm really bullish on at the moment is Polygon, and that's only an $11 billion market cap. Uh, so in our private equity fund, we do put you into Polygon very aggressively. It's really critical to Ethereum's growth. Um, and I'm worried what's gonna happen to competitors, Cardano, Solana, uh, Polkadot, and Avalanche, as soon as Ethereum, switches to proof of stake, because that was really their advantage, and that's about to, to disappear. Uh, for price predictions for Ethereum, I think it's about to really melt up. I, I do believe uh, that it could be tr trading in the next five to 10 years, way over a trillion dollar market cap. Once we look at how big some of these other markets are, uh, just massive, massive upside potential in Ethereum. Uh, can it become the number one over Bitcoin. That will be the day, we will see. It's got a long ways to do that uh, with some implementation to burn gas fees. It's actually become slightly more deflationary, uh, at least for now compared to Bitcoin. Uh, the thing is, there's still an unlimited potential supply of Ethereum, whereas Bitcoin has a finite supply. Okay, here's the gold copper ratio, predicts rates. Uh, I believe in general, we're heading to a 2002 to 2006 period where rates rise, you wanna be long. Uh, energy, uh, metals, uh, so value assets. Uh, but it's gonna take a long time to get there, so we gotta be patient. The futures are predicting a 4% chance of a 50 basis point hike in March, down from 10, I think Monday. Uh, so that's good. We're not positioned for a bunch of rate hikes. Yield curve is ugly. Uh, it's sloping and inverted on the long end, and the front end keeps moving up. Okay, so that's not good. The way it, we, they want it to be shaped is like this, uh, which is what it looked like right before we passed three trillion in spending between Trump and Biden uh, as the election ended. So this is the shape that's healthy. Uh, this is heading towards an inversion and a prediction of a recession, rate hikes causing a stock crash. Again, it's not there yet. Now our hedge uh, is now slanted the wrong way to have exponential returns. So if we do get some volatility right now, don't expect UVXY to skyrocket up. We need this to slant sideways or down and then that's when it can go parabolic. Uh, we're just looking at some drawdowns in top cryptocurrencies. So Bitcoin down 26, Cardano 27, Binance 31, Polkadot 33, Ethereum 34, Polygon 38, AVEX 39, Solana 46. Uh, buy the dip, Ethereum, Bitcoin, and Polygon, those are the three I, I believe have the highest probability of generating return. Okay, we're still seeing a lot of debt getting issued, which is, uh, Janet's already got 700 billion. She's just loading up so that uh, they can spend that money as fast as possible as soon as Congress passes more spending. They're already spending at a very fast clip. This will just ramp it up. 
Okay, here's the PPI. This has got to stop going up and it's got to stop going up very, very soon. Um, then this is the one that's even more important, the CPI. So it went from 4.6 to 4.9, a 0.3 jump. And then it went from 4.9 to 5.5, it's a 0.6 jump. That created massive volatility in the markets. Okay, so on the next print, which is the 12th, it needs to go up less than 6.1. If it's anything under than that, I believe markets will be very happy on the stock crypto side because um, that's going to signal inflation slowing month over month. If it's at 6.1 or higher, uh, watch out. That's going to give us more expectations of aggressive tightening. Okay, here's that ugly jobs data, 300,000 lost on ADP. Uh, we'll get the non-farm payroll Friday, probably gonna be negative. Okay, so that's uh, all the data I wanna look at. We already saw retail sales had fallen uh, 1.9. So, so there's good reason to believe the economy is slowing down, that rates should fall, and they're gonna be able to pass this budget. Um, Here's the Fed's balance sheet skyrocketing to 9 trillion and the Euro balance sheet also still rising. So this is all very bullish for how we're positioned. Okay, very good. So this is where you're gonna miss out if you don't upgrade on what our next trade alerts are. So call Dean so you don't miss out on the two big trades. We're gonna get you into the next play that's similar to Boyle. We just doubled up on NRGU. We just doubled up on Boil, And I have a brand new trade coming soon. Same scenario. It's trading at a low price. Uh, and it's a, it's a very hot play on energy. 505-322-7515. Call Dean and upgrade right now.